Behind the Law, the official podcast of West Tigers. Hello and welcome to episode 22 of Behind the Raw, the official podcast of West Tigers, where we give it to you straight, where we kick speculation into touch and where we learn more about the people and the stories behind this great club. Well, this week's episode celebrates the upcoming entry into the NRLW, the very first West Tigers NRLW team. They'll play their opening game this Sunday uh, at Combank Stadium against Parramatta Eels. So I guess in many respects, history will be made. We hope you can be there for what is an historic event for this club. Uh, joining me this week then are three of our senior players uh, in our inaugural squad. New South Wales State of Origin representative and NRLW Premiership winner with the Roosters, Sarah Togatuki. We have talented outside back entering her sixth season in the NRLW, Rakia Horn. And also with Pace to Burn, played Rugby Sevens with Australia for many years, Jakaya Whitfield. Ladies, welcome to Behind the Raw. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Chris. Thanks for having us. Well, this is the first. We haven't had three ladies in here before. And There's time for everything. Yes, there is. <laughs> um, how, how are we feeling generally? Like, are you starting to get a little bit nervous? It's only a few days away now. A little bit. Yeah. Like, pre-season's gone so quick. You don't realise how quick seven, eight, you know, weeks go. So, my God, game week. So, yeah, it's exciting. How's the pre-season been, uh, Sully? You, so, Sarah, but you're known as Sully, right? No one calls you Sarah. Uh, no. no who's so, Sarah? I call you Sully, right? <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. You've been, uh, you're one of the senior players in, in the NRLW, how's this pre-season compared to others you've been involved with? Um, it's probably the first time it's gone um, the longest. Mm. Um, so, like Rick said, it has gone by so quick. Um, it was great though, like, it was a bit hard, but <laughs> not, probably <laughs> not for these two. But <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it's actually been a great pre-season. I think um, Thunder, also known as um, Brenton, he's prepared the team and plays. Thunder? Like yeah, so that's sort Ooh, of the nickname. That I don't nickname. know. Where does know. it come He made up himself, apparently. <laughs> 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 apparently. <laughs> what I've been heard. That's his stage name. Yeah. <laughs> Thunder. <laughs> Thunder. That's a cool name. Well, though. lightning. Very, very mm-hmm. frightening. Um, so, <laughs> listen, so it's been a good pre-season, but, but a bit tough. That's oh, good. 100, yeah. That's good. Um, and, Jakai, so you, you were part of the Newcastle squad last year. They went on to win the Premiership. They mm-hmm. played a, a couple of games. How have you enjoyed your time, your, your initial first few weeks at the club yeah it's been awesome I personally have learned so much um this is only my second season in league I played two games last year but um apart from that I never played before so I think I've learned so much um from Noddy and all the coaching staff and um the players as well it's just been a, a huge learning curve and um I've enjoyed my time thoroughly so far so. yeah great well, we're going to learn a lot more about you as you know as much as we can I know you've got a pressing um day quite busy with some jersey presentations and all that sort of stuff. So I appreciate you jumping in to this studio here. Uh, It's been a really big week um, for the NRL team as well. Six-day turnaround, disappointing loss to the Knights um, in Newcastle last Friday. And then we we roll fast forward, play the Dragons, win Stadium Wollongong on Thursday night. So you girls will also know that sometimes you do have the quicker turnarounds and it it can be tricky. So... um, Look, West Tigers and St George Illawarra Dragons, both teams don't have the wins alongside their name that they surely would have hoped for at the start of the season. But I know that um, Thursday night uh, in uh, Wollongong, it'll be a, you know, a desperate occasion for both both of those teams. They're looking forward to that. Fingers crossed um, our boys can come away with, with a victory. Um, all right, ladies, this is how it works. I don't know if you've listened to any of the behind the roar. Uh, you'll hear the whistle blow. Okay, We'll kick things off with... The first set of six, all right? I'll ask you six questions. We'll spread them around amongst yourselves. Um, So a couple each, and we'll get to know a bit more about you. Then we'll dive a bit deeper into the middle of the show. We'll we'll chat more about the season ahead, about the inaugural squad, how it's shaping up, what your expectations for this year might be, maybe who to look out for in our squad. There might be some um, rising stars in there that could really burst onto the scene. Righto. Okay, well, let's... um, Let's get into it. Are you, you ready? You ready to roar? Yeah. Roar. <laughs> get her on. Get her on. <laughs> All right. I'm very good. Right, right out. Let's launch in. Let's launch in. Okay. Um, there is the whistle. 
There she goes. Uh, Sully, you have the first carry, okay? It's a really strong run off the back fence there at Combank Stadium. First carry. So first question you have to tackle. Um, so four seasons with the Roosters. Yep. You played in the very first NRLW season. That was in 2018. Tell us about your pathway to the NRLW, you know, how you started playing rugby league and, and how you got to where you are now. So I come – so I'm Samoan and I come from a very um, religious family and in our culture ideally looked – or with my parents in nowadays, like they still sort of carry the past of its culture, like females and that aren't allowed to be playing contact sport, um, can play, but just as long as um, the father, like the male, dominant male in mm. a family, IDs the sport as a safe sport um, for the child. So I actually kicked off um, my sporting career with netball. Um, and quite surprisingly, um, not surprisingly, but... Um, my dad couldn't really afford my registrations and I did really want to play sports but mm. that was the only sport my dad was saying yes to. So then I had an uncle who was very um, kind enough who had a wife who was Australian and she sort of um, knew the whole pathways of sports and that and so they were very generous and um, said, look, we'd pay for her fee because they said, oh, she looks, seems like she's mm. pretty good and so I gave it a crack. Um, then thanks to my uncle and my auntie, like, um, so Johnny and Serena, so they actually um, – got like the whole netball ball rolling for me and then I got picked up for reps and whatnot and I was just trying to make states and yeah. so close but then obviously um my brother passed away mm. and I was just telling him that you know I'm playing netball and I just I was like sort of losing interest for it and he was playing footy himself and um he just sort, sort of encouraged me you know mm. like why don't you give footy a go and I was like, oh, we both know, like, Dad wouldn't allow it. Allow it right? Yeah, so um, he said, oh, just, I don't know, I'm sure you can, I don't know. Have a chat. Yeah, a chat, yeah, something like that. But then, um, yeah, that's just the last time I even conversated with him and then he passed away. And I found that, like, in one way to honour, like, my last memory with him was just actually take on his encouragement, um, his advice. And so I reached out to a cousin of mine named Lola V and... Um, she was actually like trying to give like coaching a, ro um, a go with rugby league and this was with Glenmore Park Brumbies mm -hmm. and I reached out and I said hey like I want to give footy a go um, and like it was I was just really in a desperate time I was in a dark mm. place just lost my brother didn't know how to mourn the death and all so um, that's what I did I just reached out to her and, and just needed something to do I didn't want to go back to netball. Um, yeah. And then she came back and said, "Yep, yeah, I can, I can definitely um, get you to come to some of our trainings. We'd have to learn you the, the whole fundamentals and everything." And I was like, I was really nervous when I hit her up, and she'd come back with all that, and I was like, "Oh yeah." But the mm. only issue was my parents were actually the ones who took me to a netball training, so it was very hard to actually try and go to a footy training. So yeah. um, I then told my parents, and she she was on board with this, and even my uncle was, and. That, like because he was sort of coaching my netball team so then I told him I wanted to go try rugby league and he was very aware that rugby league and females like it was sort of growing it was sort of a thing coming yeah. um to be big and then he was like yeah like you know go give it a go so, so I'm really grateful to my uncle that he actually like told me to go do it and I reached out to my cousin who she just got her license and everything and I asked you reckon you can pick me up and take me to trainings because she needed a number in her team for players and she was like, oh, you know, it's a, it's a win-win for both of us. So oh, she picked up a good one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, something like here that. You <laughs> and here you are. And here you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I told her mum, I had to lie to her and I lied and I said, look, I'm going to netball training. Um, I just took a lie for you. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it went, for, it went for so long. <laughs> it went for so freaking this long. This white lie? Yeah, All this right. lie. And when did you have to come clean? Did and you know, when we made the grand final. Like, <laughs> and you wanted we, them to come watch? Yeah, we, or not. <laughs> To be honest, it was hard because my mum was a Sunday school teacher. Mm. And because, like I said, we're very religious. My mum was like a Sunday school teacher. I was her student. And during the whole season, like the the season we were playing then, it wasn't really Harvey Norman then. It was just a nine-a-side team. And, um, like, it was just the duration of it. It was just the timing. It was just all around Sunday school. Like, and we even had, like, this big play and my mum gave me this big role in it. And I learned all my lines and they call it White Sunday. So it was just, yeah, obviously it was, it runs in every, it's annually this White Sunday and it, it occurs um, every October. So October ideally for a lot of junior, like rugby mm. league, I think the grand finals roughly lie around then. I don't know what it's, what it's like now, but at the time then it was actually um, around then too. But uh, yeah, I just told my cousin we'd had to lie and I was carrying that lie for a while and it didn't sit with me well. 
Mm. Obviously, when we made grand final, I was enjoying footy. I lost um, focus of what was going on on the outside of footy. And there was like, yeah, I don't know. Came, so just, oh, sorry, I'm just like really going back to it because it just really no, haunts me. That's good. Well, I, it I, haunts I me because this story. I haven't heard this. No, story. just coincidentally, the grand final had to be on the same day <laughs> we had our White Sunday big play. Of course it did. And my mum, I went, I was never, I was not at White Sunday. I decided to go play this grand final. We didn't win, so oh. one, we lost, and then two, I was going to get a hiding after it. So um, <laughs> my parents were my mum. But listen, the, the weight off your shoulders. Now you've, you've so come clean. I've come clean and look. You that, missed White Sunday. Yeah, well, they were they were very upset with me and I don't know. Well, obviously but they must I'm, be very proud now, right, oh, what, what you've done. They're my yeah. biggest fan now, so yeah. it's <laughs> so weird how it all started. Like, yeah. I don't, yeah. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. Um, Jakaya, yes. you're coming off, the, off your wing. But second carry, this could be a long set of six, ladies. Um, bat- <laughs> it could be. I think so. Bathurst upbringing. Mm-hmm. Love your horses. Yes. How does? How do you get involved and how do you represent your country in green and gold playing rugby sevens for Australia? How did that work? Um, so I first started playing when I think I was in grade eight. So probably 14 or 15. Um, and I grew up playing all sports like athletics, cross country, um, hockey, I rode competitively horse riding for until I was about 16 when I um, kind of chose footy, I guess. Yeah, and I went to a rugby sevens comp in Dubbo. I just got – went with the school and I kind of just got picked up from there. Um, I just really enjoyed the sport and um, I guess – being fast, kind of <laughs> like it was just all, so like I could just space. catch it the ball so and run. Space. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, in so you just blitzed it, right? There's yeah. So much space, and um, yeah, I remember my first. I think we made the finals. We went down to Sydney with my school, and there's a photo of me, and I've like got this like bright um, coloured headgear. I just oh, can't no. believe I ever no. wore that. <laughs> but um, I had it on this but photo, and I'm like pointing, and I got called like the enforcer, and it's pretty funny because it's kind of like. I'm pretty vocal on the field, so it's kind of held its way through. Enforcer. Um, can you bring back the headgear? Mm. Yeah. No, One I of the Dragons Girls has got the coloured headgear. Um, yeah, Centre, Dragons Girl, come on. Not Paige. Yes. Paige McGregor. Oh, no, yes. Yes. Said this was like, mo- like every single colour. No, it, we want rainbow headgear. Yeah, head it was gear. rainbow headgear. We head want gear. it. Yeah, and my mum used to make – well, not make me, but for some reason I thought it would, like, really protect me. So I used to wear yeah. shoulder pads and <laughs> headgear. But right. That's so cute. Yeah. We could be onto something. <laughs> we could yeah. be onto um, it. Rikia, you played yes. every NRLW season from 2018, so this will be your sixth season going in. So that's scary. I read a story on the West Tigers website. You're almost a bit of a veteran, a veteran. at the age of – 23. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Louise. Rick and I actually used to play together when we were 15. Did you? Yeah, sevens. we played sevens together. I wasn't so we as came good through as the system. Yeah. The Aussie oh gosh, is system. That Aussie so much space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These look so yeah, different. Yeah, the blue bells. The blue bells, 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 yeah, I yeah. think it was. Yeah, we were in the second team. Yeah, though. but we were we were better. So yeah. <laughs> there you go. You see you soon, Para. <laughs> Rick, can I call you Rick? Yeah, Rick. Did uh, your dad had a, quite an influence on you oh, playing no. rugby league? No. He, yes, but not in a good way. Yeah, no. He yeah, no. Hated the idea of me wanting to play rugby league. I can understand that. So it started probably probably like 16, 15. Really wanted to go to this sports school. My friends went there and he's like, no, you're not going. You're not playing rugby. You're not doing it. I ended up convincing him somehow. And that's sort of how it kicked off playing, you know, rugby union a lot for school. And we had some league gala days and that's sort of how it kicked off. But, yeah, he's my biggest fan now. I and bet. Yeah, like big time. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, he's really supportive of footy, which makes it a whole lot easier. So, yeah, he's my we biggest got fan. So, I've got 16-year-old daughter and – she started playing rugby as well in the boys' team. That's hectic. It wow. was. And I was thinking, God, you know, but go for it, girl. Like, yeah. I was really proud and so happy that she'd do that. But I was a little bit concerned that, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit old school. Like, yeah. will she, yeah. get, will she sure. get hurt? Yeah. No, it's really bloody physical, That's, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so I can understand why your dad might have at first had reservations, and right? Probably at yeah. this time, too, there's not enough promotion of the women's playing or just I mean, women. But I tell you, know. you what, it is. 
now it is that, coming yeah. along big, big time. So the club I coach at, uh, we've got about six girls tag teams now, up wow. to under 16s or even beyond that. Yeah. It's and it's really taken off, and they're all talking about the NRLW, so which a few years ago you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have got. We're digressing yeah. a bit, aren't we? Yeah. Let me come back to <laughs> the right, dummy half throws it. So another hit up by Salah. Okay. Yeah, oh, geez, takes three to br- takes three go. to bring you down. Uh, quick play the ball to why West Tigers? Oh, it was just natural. Um, it's just closer to home for me. I've always been a Western Sydney girl. I'm big on it. Um, being from the area myself. Uh, obviously, when NRW kicked off in 2018, there was only four teams, mm. and it was obviously just the Dragons and Roosters. And for anyone who's trying to aspire to one day, you know, um, play NRW, you got to sort of go after it. And there's a couple of players I could name that had to sacrifice a fair bit just to go make their dreams come true. And I sort of, my mum was obviously driving at the time for me back and forth for trainings and. I just I couldn't handle seeing my mum do that for me all the time, and I was a bit of a lazy ass not mm. getting my own license. So I ended up. You got it now. Yeah, I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I nah. hope to keep it. Mum takes so. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw her out in reception. Oh wow, God! <laughs> She's trying to get the roller door out to get the car out. Freaky <laughs> 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 um, oh. So local that that okay cool. So. Um, well, you can't rely on your mum forever. I know. Yeah. I ended up relocating um, to, well, first it was Brighton with Sam's. Then I went from Brighton. <laughs> Couldn't afford to live there. So <laughs> it's, uh, pretty, it's pretty expensive out in the eastern suburbs compared oh, to. Oh, so to, yeah. so um, to Northern Beaches, girl. Really? Oh, hmm. wow. Well, Brookie's a bit more inland than Yeah, Brookie. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come to oh, the Druid. Cut the cake. Yeah. <laughs> 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 cake. Um, righto. Um, quick play the ball. Whitfield with the second carry of the opening set. Tell us about uh, your role with the Starlight Foundation because you were spotted at Westmead Children's Hospital mm-hmm. last week. Yes. Um, I guess uh, when growing up, um, my family, we fostered a lot of kids. Right. Um, and I guess my um, connection to the Starlight Foundation, we looked after a little girl. So we lived in Darwin, um, travelled a lot with Dad's work. Uh, What's he? He was in child protection with the federal police. Um, that was one of his jobs. He was yeah. also a peacekeeper in the army. Oh, cool. Did a lot of things. But we spent a lot oh. of time up in the Northern Territory um, in communities out there with Dad's work and just travelling. And we met a little girl and she actually lived with us for about five years. So she was from Mill and Gimby um, up Which in the Arnhem where? Land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, oh. So a community very, very remote. Mm. Um, and she had to have a liver transplant. So um, she had to be residing in New South Wales to be able to be eligible um and her grandma was her primary care at the time and she didn't like um to go on a plane so we took her in and she lived with us or on and off for about five years she actually had to have a uh, second transplant but she had two so um I guess through that my parents taught me a lot about I guess giving back and um um where you can I guess lend a hand and I guess literally save someone's life um, and How nice that. be able to do that. So I guess in my career I always wanted to be able to give back to the community in the way that my parents had been able to give back to kids growing up um, and that's always been a big drive for my, um, I guess, my involvement in the community. And I think when Eileen was in hospital she spent so much time in the starlight rooms and I knew how much of an impact it did have on her being in the hospital um, and just... I guess the ability for them to just uh, take away from the the I guess the illnesses of the kids, mm. or not the illnesses, but being able to put a oh, smile on their face. Puts a bit of joy in there, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and just be out for them to be able to go in there and like smile and take their mind off what's going on in the background, and also for their families. Um, it was just an organisation that I was. Um, I guess I really admired, admired yeah. what they did in the hospital. So I reached out to them, probably like. 18 months ago, I guess. and Just I by yourself? Just yeah, I just wanted yeah. to – initially I just wanted to volunteer mm. um, in anywhere really where I could. Um, and then I got in touch with them and they they were lovely. And um, I did a few like online channels during COVID. It was really difficult because obviously we couldn't get into the hospitals. So I did some stuff online where the kids could um, like send me in Q&As and it was like a live stream and yeah. um, in every – room the kids all have their tvs with the starlight channel on it 
so that was really cool. And then when I was up in Newey, I got to go out to John Hunter um, yeah. and go through the wards and hand out posters and see all the kids. And that was awesome. And then finally, um, I got to do it down in Westmead, which is where Eileen actually was. So oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that was so really cool. cool. It's nice, eh? Yes. Mm. We learned so much about you we girls. We didn't even know. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I met like, like a little kid who was from out in Dubbo and I worked out there last year and they uh, – parents i think grew up in bathurst so it was like a bit of a connection so out there the other week that's lovely Sweet. well now they do a wonderful job starlight foundation yeah, i've been they do. yeah no they really do um right out last tackle the tigers they shape to kick but uh they fool the eels with a long ball it goes to uh horn she splits the defense she's brought down inches from the line but gee i tell you what it's a brilliant yeah. opening set <laughs> in the inaugural <laughs> season for west tigers Netball as a young girl, um, when did you know you sort of had a special talent for rugby league? God, probably still during school. Um, I grew up with no brothers, dad didn't play footy, you know. Everyone in the family pretty much played netball, so I didn't really know anything different. And then when I was about 16, I sort of got a bit bored of it. Um, you know, I was like, I always played touch as a kid, but like it was mainly netball. I just got a bit bored and then... When I went to the sports school, you know, that sort of what changed everything and sort of realised, oh, I go all right. Um, and then, what, yeah, what school was that? Uh, Illawarra Sports yeah. High. Yeah. Uh, down in um, Berkeley, Wollongong. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, just joined local comp footy for the Coromel Cougars and sort of just got picked up there the um, first year of the Tasha Gale comp. I was privileged to be a part of that as well. So that's literally how footy started for me. So... Yeah. So, yeah, I'm trying to get my sister into playing footy, but mum won't let her. How She's 15. <laughs> She's 15. Speed? She, nah. She Strong? Front rower. <laughs> oh. Front rower. <laughs> Completely different. Well, hang on. Some front rowers yeah. got speed. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, she's <laughs> slow. <laughs> she's slow, but, like, she'd be able to run over everyone. I'm like, mum, come we'll on. Just like, get, you're get, just wasting her. Just give her a few sessions with thunder. Waste, yeah, <laughs> she'll be sweet. <laughs> Mum's like, no, she's not playing footy. I'm like, well, Whatever. Does she, play, does she play any sports right now? She used to play basketball, but she's yeah. not playing she's anything tall? this year. Yeah, she's tall. She's like Damn. six foot something. What? Mate, that's in, that'd be great for props. Like, can overlook she's everything. She's huge. Choose who you want to run at. <laughs> oh, well, then, and then there's your mould. <laughs> yeah, the short. Yeah. The short, the <laughs> Pocket rocket. Yeah, the Pocket short rocket. Listen, we, uh, <laughs> you girls are great chat, right? <laughs> Enjoying this. And you chat a lot more than the boys do. <laughs> oh, really? And we're going we're gonna to run short of time. Um, that's our opening set of six. And like half the potty's gone, <laughs> which is a good thing. Thanks, Sala. <laughs> which is a good thing. It's good. No, let's. Um, yeah, HIA. <laughs> Be sure to join West Tigers at our Women in League luncheon on the 24th of August in the Wink Stand at Royal Randwick Racecourse. Hear from keynote speaker Ellie Cole and a panel of exceptional women and contributors to the sporting landscape, all hosted by Sam Squires. Contact the corporate team today. That's the Women in League Luncheon. Come on, show your stripes. Okay, let's talk some footy then. So um, the loss to the Sharks a couple of weeks ago, so your one and only trial. I thought they looked really good and they have got a pretty good squad. Mm. Yeah. A lot of work for us to work on, right? Because we dropped a fair bit of ball, et cetera. But what was, what was Noddy saying after that? What did you take out of that loss? Not that you really count the wins and losses in trials, but where were the areas that you, you need to improve, I guess? I think probably just, um, I guess, executing our plays. Yeah. Um, I think that on reflection of the game, there was something like a lot that let us down was just our basic principles. Um, contact and then not like I guess executing our plays mm. off the back of that so I think we had something like six or eight opportunities where we could, we have, could scored. have scored and mm. we just we didn't we either dropped the Drop ball, ball or a bad went pass to yeah. or happened yeah. so I think looking back on that like I guess for us to be able to not let them can see yeah they can another see thing would have been like completion point. so I think in the mm. first half we only had six yeah. out of ten sets mm. completed or yeah. I'm probably wrong but you know you can't really can't really be in the game unless you're actually putting pressure on the opposition and no. that they, they were pretty fresh off like obviously they were scoring a fair bit in first half but th then again I felt despite the score like we did go away in second half and Noddy did speak to us that we needed to tighten up little things here and there and he did and we did and mm. you know what I think they only had what one try against us up true but mm, yeah. that's a positive like we knew that they that's t I felt like personally that's their actual starting 
they're, they've yeah. literally put it. That's their starting yep, team. they did. Right, yeah. so they came with all that f- force. Whereas we were actually trialling people in different positions, you know, and once we've given – Obviously, this week now, Noddy's probably already given clarity to the players where they're playing. You know, it's now given every player enough time to mm. work on those little fundamentals to add to their game and, you know, their position for the team. But yeah. I, I'm still positive for our team. We'll always be. Um, I still think we can still win the premiership. On a positive we'll, note, we'll though, the dogs. like, <laughs> that's the goal. the first year that we've all had a trial game. Um, it's usually, like, just round one. There straight you go. into it. There you go. Got no combos or anything. Like, here yeah, you go. Sorry, yeah. At yeah. least we got something now I can look back on and be like, okay, we need to fix this up, this up, this up before round one. Mm. Yeah. So, like, that's the positive no, we're absolutely. taking and out of it. that's what trials are for. Oh, 100%. Make mistakes. Yeah. Learn what you, so that, yeah, no. But look, well, I think you'll be fine. I saw some really good stuff there. But I think just Definitely. ball control, just, yeah. Will, yeah. Cha- Shooting, yeah. Ball control will, will change a whole lot. Um, the squad that you've got, or we've got, rather, uh, compared to sort of other NRLW, I think – We've probably got more local talent or girls that have come through our pathways, which is, I think, an advantage, right, for us in terms of girls coming to West Tigers and and making the step through from even the Raw squad through to the NRLW. 100%. I don't think any of us are local juniors, but (laughs) (laughs) putting into perspective, like, they've now got that pathway, you know, coming up from under whatever it is, under 16s. Mm. Um, into the Tasha Gale, into Harvey Norman, and now into NRLW. Like, it's a big thing. Mm. And these local girls are going to, you know, going to want to play in the NRLW mm. one day. So it's good that they now got mm. this pathway. So you girls have been brought in, right? Recruits, yeah. Yeah. Some oh, of our yeah. marquee yeah. recruits, if you like. But you can't keep doing that. You want to be you want to be You want to be growing the own. players that you got. Yeah. I think it's beautiful that the clubs acknowledging their pathways. It just shows that what they've had, they're sticking to yeah. it. Whereas I've seen a lot of clubs that come in, like become their inaugural teams, and mm. they actually go away from actually recruiting their own local mm. players. Um, but I think West Tigers are doing an awesome job. Um, so y- you're preparing else. for your first NRLW campaign here w- with this club. Rewind, say five, six, seven years. Did you ever think, you know what, I'm going to be playing semi-professional or professional? Rugby league? No, I honestly didn't even know like the NRLW existed. There you <laughs> <go>. like, <laughs> there honestly, you go. a few years ago, like when I hear Rick played six seasons, like I wouldn't have even heard of it. Like maybe three years ago, mm. I reckon. Like I, I, I didn't know that like girls got paid uh, paid to play rugby league. Um, and I think just the growth in the game, particularly in the last like, oh, so that's why you're here, the ching ching. <laughs> yeah. Hey? No. Yeah. <laughs> so much full time sport to come here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think the growth and the development in the game in the last few years is enormous. And I Absolutely. think we'll be looking back in like the next five or 10 years and being like, oh my gosh, like, look, look at mm. what the, how the game has changed, um, in the past five or like five to 10 years and how lucky those girls will be to be in that position as we are now. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's growing year on year. Mm. The trajectory mm. is, and, and I'm not just talking you know bums on seats people at the games the, yeah. you know people watching it um and that all the knock-on effect is corporate sponsors want to yeah. put their money behind yeah. it right mm-hmm. and we're yeah. very lucky to have you know brydens and, and zurich a, a, as well so the game in general i think the sky is sort of the limit yeah okay. you girls work though right so that's the that's the big thing like trying to juggle you want to yes. be you know professional um oh. Yeah. Is it it's difficult? What are the some what are, some what are some of the challenges there? Juggling I mean, training and, and work um, and family yeah, life. It is very tough, you know, juggling work and you got your family and you got life itself. Like I gotta wake up at four AM every day. <clears throat> so um I don't get much sleep at the moment. <laughs> I'm getting like five hours max. Um so I'm pretty much a zombie but can you live on that? Not <laughs> she's on it for a while. Look at me. Right. <laughs> Look at me. Um, <laughs> no, it is really tough and it does take a toll mentally, not just physically. Um, but you do it because you love it, I guess. And hopefully one day we can go full time and we won't have to work as well. But at mm. the moment, like mm. this is how it is and it is what it is. But we could just got to f- go through this to sort of get where we want to get. But like some of the girls have kids as well. Like yeah. I don't yeah. know how on so earth they juggle with kids so like ha- props to them but like it is really tough you know juggling everything with footy and yeah. well, one thing I think that's what sometimes people don't understand I think sometimes when people see that we do get paid what we do that mm. they automatically think that that is our full-time job for the period 
of mm. when we're contracted. But I think like people have to understand that like no workplace is going to employ you for like six, six months, months of the year. No. So like it's really difficult to find a, a workplace that will just be like, okay, during your season we'll give you like a few hours a day or mm. three or four days a week. It's, be that flexible. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's so hard <laughs> to maintain that. Yeah. Um, and like myself, I have four jobs now and it's so hard. So what are they? Train. What are you doing then? Um, mm. So I work with, as a youth worker. Yep. So I picked that up um, when I came down. Um, so I work in out of home resi care. And then I work at a behavioural mental health school two days a week. And then I also work um, with the Go Under Academy. So I've just started doing. So what's that one? That's Greg Inglis's yeah, oh yeah, 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 um, mental yeah. health yeah. Um, yeah. program. God, you're a busy girl. So so good I do time. one day a week with them, but it's it's mm. difficult because like not one, w- not one job will give me no. like that full time um, work. So it's so hard. I can't l- I can't leave one because like no. for example, like the youth work is where I was, I guess, getting most of my hours prior to coming into the NRLW season, and I can't give that up because when I do finish NRLW season, I need a full time job. It. So it's just so hard to maintain everything. Rent is Get expensive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Living is expensive. <laughs> yeah. And Rick, what are you doing on the um, supplement? Put food on the table. What? <laughs> supplement? 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 What do you mean? Supplement your income. <laughs> oh, I was like, what on earth? Um, I'm just I mean, a forklift, I I'm a forklift know, operator yeah. at the moment. But before then I was working in, correcti- in corrections in the jail. But I sadly had that? to give that. It was great. <laughs> I sadly had to give that up though because it was shift work. And it just, mm. I couldn't yes. do it. I couldn't do it with footy. So, mm. you know, this works for me Monday to Friday. Mm. Get yes. the weekends off. So Maybe that's what I haven't discovered oh, yet. Yeah. And we're lucky to have you. So you've recently joined the community department yeah, here. Yeah, I love it. Are you enjoying that, huh? I'm loving it. Working with Bo. Yeah, I'm Kezi? Under, yeah. Andrew. I don't reckon there's much work gets done. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Must be nice. Is that desk? Is that desk down there? <laughs> I, st- I, I actually still do my other job. No, I know you're out you're about enriching. Yeah. Pardon? You're out about enriching. Yeah, all the community. that community giving back. What, what Jakai said. I actually <laughs> miss all my other jobs in that. It's just obviously an RW. Three jobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I actually, I was actually like, I'm not trying to speak up here, but um, <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> I actually loved working banking and that. So when my brother passed away, my dad needed a helping hand with like financial stuff and that. And are you good with numbers? Too. So yeah, surprisingly, um, <laughs> my HSC <laughs> didn't go well. But I don't know. I think I'm, I'm. I would like to say I'm good with numbers. So I went right into home um, loan investment shares and all that. So mm-hmm. I was doing. That was a nine to five contract. So it was hard when NRW was coming out. Even though it was like. The sessions weren't as big as what they are now. Yeah. But it was just hard f- to get, like, corporate and that to be like, I need to go to training. To them, mm. it was like, I don't care because it's not yeah. a big thing. Like, it's not a big yeah. deal. But now that it is, I'm seeing some of my mates who are now gone into banking and they, they actually get flexibility because – all those corporate people be like, yeah, we know, like you've got yeah. Westpac and that doing the New South Wales Blues. Like that's massive to see. And I s- actually used to work under them. So to see them actually jump on board, um, it, that shows that our game's actually growing. It's, it's getting out there, so it's you good. You might be able to manage the girls' finances. Yeah, and all that. me. Maybe in mine. Yours, I'm in, I'm in yeah. dire straits at the moment. That's a story, <laughs> no, no, that's no, a story no. for another day. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. And listen, no, I, I know I read – a few months ago, a really nice story. You helped get your mum set up. Your parents um, bought them a house. Yes. Yeah. Just Not all of us. <laughs> when I saw a couple of my mates actually achieve what I actually wanted to achieve, so yeah. Brian Tor and um, Critter, oh, sorry, yeah. Stephen Crichton. So, you know, to see them actually do what they've done, and they actually use their footy money. So, thankfully, I actually saved a bit of my own footy money, um, and I actually still had my job in that. So, that was a massive bonus in making, you know. Purchasing a property. Oh, well done, bonus. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of girls out, like, I used to think back and be like, oh, surely us girls will never be able to do that because we're sort of playing, like, you know, mm. part-time footy and doing part-time work. Like, how can you make, like, put them together and be like, here, chuck it to the bank and be like... Oh, it's some mm. wonderful, wonderful things I'm hearing around this this little oh, table. Yeah. I tell you what, <laughs> no, I mean, and, like, I haven't really met you girls before, a little bit here and there, but... um. It's great to sort of learn the stuff that, that I'm learning now. You're, um, what's Noddy like to work with? He's so cool. Yeah, he's great. He's so great, yeah. Such a good teacher. Who's Noddy's pet? Very Who's good. the teacher's pet? Uh, I reckon Stainsy. Tess? Tess? I was yeah. thinking you. Me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Stainsy, nah. Stainsy, nah. Oh. 
how me, Rick? I don't know. Okay, so I was thinking, I thought, I thought, I thought <laughs> Kezzy, but uh, yeah. like, I'd see him Kezzy. pick on her all the time. You said pre season was hard, like, like, like physically, was it pretty taxing? 100. Yeah. Like, I, I thought it. it was, yeah. Well, we've, <laughs> we, did okay. three, we did do three Broncos this yeah. pre season. Oh, sorry, I did two, but um, oh, oh. we should, could say it did. Well, the, bron- the Broncos. Well, we're, yeah, well, we did three Broncos. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, up and back. That's what I did in my boys' Monday. I coach 15s so when they do something wrong at, into the Broncos. Yeah. <laughs> what? Get on the trial oh, line. No. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Mate, got to hold the gold. Hold yeah. the gold. No <laughs> holding gold. We're in trouble. Brighton's lawyers are the lawyers you know and trust. If you require legal representation, then why look anywhere else? Call Brighton's lawyers on 1800 848 848. Brighton's lawyers, we do support you in your time of need. All right, uh, we've got some uh, some quick fire questions here. Uh, Nevada George threw a few of them in, actually. Oh, Didn't she? Nice. I thought she nice. she put some hits on against the Sharks, too. Mate, she's she? a gun huh? player. She can <laughs> play. Hey, righto, number one, who got the best uh, score in the 1.2 Bronco? Oh, thankfully she's sitting right here with us. <laughs> Go, girl. Oh. Would you yeah. like to what tell you them your time? time? You get? <clears throat> Just a casual <laughs> casual four point something. Thank you. Four point. So yeah. that's you. Yes. Perfect. Well done. Who would you say is the biggest uh, joker in the team? Joker. Mm. Not me. Larrikin. Fool. Yes, yeah, Stainsy yeah, again. Stainsy, yeah, she's she's a pest. Teacher's pet. Funny, teacher's yeah. pet she's and a the. Pest. Yeah. Um, how old is the youngest in the team, and and who is the youngest? We. It'd be. Would it be our dev players? Yeah, Mima. <laughs> I think Mima or she's T? sixteen. Mima. Sixteen. Oh yeah, she's in year eleven. Yeah, she's, she's still in school. Yeah. She's she comes said the to other day something about uniform. being on school holidays, and I was like, "Girl, oh you're loving it." <laughs> Golly, gosh. good old days. Like year eleven, still who, has another year left. Who gets the most fines each week? So what? You have a fine system if you're late. Yeah, so so I'll probably say I'm in there. I'm up there. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Still got two outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> what year did Noddy win the NRL Premiership, and what club was 1999 he? Nineteen ninety nine Storm. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Should I get yeah, a prize? Girl. You sure you're not not his pet? No, I'm oh. not. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, right? Hey, um, so many more stuff we could talk about. Can we get in again, maybe at some yes. point? Yes, hundred percent. Get Georgie in. That should yeah. be fun. Yeah. yeah, we'll be prep. Um, <laughs> so Parramatta then on Sunday. What are we expecting from them? I mean, you played there. Is that is their squad changed much? Oh, it's changed drastically. Uh, there was only a few girls that stayed from last season, but you know, you you don't know what you're gonna meet in mm. like come up against in round one. Like, um, I know you know they're still gonna be strong across the board, and they've still got some really you know deadly players out there. And Dino is such a good coach, so I'm sure he's leading the girls in the right direction. But mm. um, it's hard to say. It's a whole new squad. It's a bit the same as ours, so. We'll have to wait and see on Sunday. Mm. I feel like it's almost like every squad, there's been so much movement this season with players I that agree. it's like, you know, almost every just team is just like a new a new squad. That's really yeah. new. Excited? Very yeah. Nice. Bring it. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, what was I going to say? What was going to say? New sponsor jumped on board today as oh, well. Yeah. So, uh, or yesterday, Georgie Main, hair care products and all that oh, sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, Mine's looking I a guess. bit damaged at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's you know, the No, it's the chlorine. <laughs> I've been swimming. So it's gone like green. Oh, don't worry about it's that. Green. I, don't, I don't really care what I look like, clearly. I love that, um, like, women's brands um, are coming on to support mm. the women's teams. Like, you know, you so, see so many, like, I guess, uh, brands that are like guy products yeah. that are yeah, supporting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what's an example. Well, Georgie yeah. Main is but actually owned by a male. Um, well, he used to. But I mean, it's a women's product. Women's yeah. product supporting yeah. a women's program. Exactly. What if I'm going wants to use it? This is opening up, opening up, well, up new revenue streams. <laughs> they could, <laughs> but as if a, as if Georgie Main is going to sponsor the guys. No. There's like, oh, yeah, we'll there's a few. Actually, no, 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 no. Have you seen some of the NRL players, our boys? Do they have? Georgie Mae. No, they take their hair very seriously, take some it. of them. Well, you got Game day cards. Game. Like, oh, play. they do Justin have Matamua. it. Justin We're going to have to get yeah. some products Asuka down Power. in the barber. <laughs> Isaiah Papali, have you seen? They really take care of their, wow. like, their locks. Thanks, Chris. No, anyway. And also, you know, big ups too to um, Brydens and, and Zurich and, and other yes. sponsors that do Thank join us throughout the year. You've very got player sponsors as well. You've all been sponsored. So um, it's all up. 
really looking forward to it. Should be yeah, uh, that, exciting. Then we wouldn't have. All Thank that. you so much for coming in. Now, listen. So I'll just go through this. Right, let's take it away. So Sunday we've got the standalone midday fixture, Combank Stadium, uh, against the Eels. Um, then we have an NRL uh, double header, uh, the Sharks. Uh, that's Sunday, 30th of July at Belmore. Sunday, 6th of August, we have the NRL W NRL double header. That's the curtain raiser to the Raiders um, at GIO Stadium. Saturday, 12th of August, NRL W double header in Brisbane. So we take on the Broncos there. Round five uh, in August, we play the Dragons at Combank. That's a curtain raiser to West Tigers NRL game against the Dolphins. Round six uh, against the Roosters at Allianz Stadium. Have you played there? You haven't played there. Not the new one, no. No. Very excited. It's crazy good. Uh, That's an NRLW and NRL doubleheader, so that's against the Chooks. Round seven, Sunday 3rd of September, two days after my birthday, uh, versus the Titans at (laughs) Seabus Super Super Stadium. So that's an NRLW doubleheader. Is that Seabus? Is that Titans? Yeah, 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 Goldie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah. no, no, that's the curtain raiser to the Titans. They're playing the Dogs, oh, yeah. NRL. Round 8, 9th of September, NRL double header in Newcastle. So we play the Broncos. That must be for a second time. Um, the final round, standalone fixture, Thursday, 14th of September at Campbelltown Sports Stadium against the Knights. My birthday. And the week after that, we're in the finals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Girls, thanks very much for coming in. Um, enjoy round one. Um, we hope to see as many of our members and fans out there at Combank Stadium. Well, that's it for this edition. You know the score. We'll be back same time, same place next week. Until then, show your stripes. Behind the Wall, the official podcast of West Tigers.